السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back my friend to my YouTube channel Brilling and Work Over This is Abdelaziz Gabr I am a credit instructor in IWCF Well Control and IEDC Well Sharp Also I am a credit instructor in IEDC Mod Engineering for Basic and Advanced Mod School uh, Today inshallah we will talk about very important lesson in the polymer chemistry which are the types of the polymers that we are using uh, in the water-based mud for example we will talk as i told you there are three types natural modified and synthetic so we will talk first about the natural one then inshallah we will talk about the modified and after that we will talk about the synthetic so take care of this number one the naturally occurring polymers as I told you, most of the polymers are coming from the natural or from the original material like potatoes, like rice, like starch, like all these things. So when we are talking about the natural ones, we have the most the most common here are the starch or the starch, okay, and its uh, trade name or its commercial name is called the uh, this is the starch. It's called also polysal or something like this, according to the uh, the manufacturing, the manufacturer company. Uh, then after after taking uh, this, we will talk about the synthangum or XC polymer or barzan or this according to the uh, company which are we dealing with. So the first one is the starch. Okay, what's the source of the starch? Actually, the starch can be taken from wheat. Okay, or potatoes, grains, and corn, which is the major, the corn. Okay. Uh, also, what is its composition? The composition of starch and why it is uh, considered a fluid loss reducer. The composition it's composed mainly of two polysaccharides, two types or two different types of polysaccharides. Number one is called amylose, and number two is called amylopectin. The amylose is a chain of carbohydrate rings makes up the straight chain backbone of the starch molecule. So each polymer or each monomer, actually each monomer of this polymer uh, is, is composed mainly of backbone and side chains. So the backbone here is called amylose and the side chains are the amylopectin. It's a highly branched chain of carbohydrate rings that branches off from an amylose backbone. The ratio between the amylose and amylopectin frac fractions determine the properties of the starch. So as you see here, this is the amylose. Okay, as you see here, this is the amylose. And these are the groups okay when we add uh, the caustic soda and the BH so this groups okay has uh, some modification happened to it as I told you in the polymers in the last uh, in the last uh, session and this is uh, uh, makes new editing and become here that we will lose the the H from here and it will be negative negative which means it becomes for example anionic or something like this and start to do the uh, reactions here also the amylopectin it is it is also here this is the side chain and both of them according to the fractions and according to uh, them uh, will start to make the uh, reactions okay okay the functions of the starch number one the primary function of the starch is to reduce the filtrate loss or reduce the filter uh, loss why because it has some colloidals, colloidal water soluble particles that seal the pores in the filter case. So the starch has colloidal uh, swellable particles that seal the pores in the filter cake. And it's secondary, it provides some viscosity, but its main function is uh, to reduce the fluid loss. Uh, what are the draw works or drawbacks or the problems of the starch? What are the problems of the starch? Number one, it is subject to fermentation. 
which means that after uh, putting or uh, adding water to it, it will it, it, it makes some fermentation and it leads to bacterial degradation, so it cannot make good uh, properties from it. Number two, it needs from 0.2 to 0.5 pounds per barrel of biocide in order to uh, in order to remove the bacterial uh, attack. Okay, biodegraded by heating also and agitation above 200 Fahrenheit. Actually, the starch cannot be used in the high BHT. Why? Because it has limited temperature to be worked uh, in. So at some times we can add uh, some things called polymer stabilizer like PTS 200 in order in order to keep its uh, thermal uh, in order to make its it, uh, it high thermal stable in uh, the high environment like high BIT. Uh, this biodegradation uh, by heat can be occurred due to the continued circulation, continuous circulation, uh, and also it can be due to the filtration control is dimensioned or diminished, and viscosity is relatively unaffected. What are the starch properties? Number one, uh, typical concentration. Okay, typical in con concentration in most of the programs is from two to six bound per barrel. Number two is called guar gum. Guar gum, as I told you before, it's a high molecular weight. So as it is high molecular weight, it gives high viscosity. It's also non-ionic, so it doesn't matter or it, it is not used. It, it can be used in high calcium environment without any problems. It can be used in drilling the cement also. Uh, it can be also used in the what's called the spacer, the spacer of the cement uh, also. So it is very important because it is non-ionic. Uh, it is a viscosifier in fresh water and salt water. It doesn't matter. It needs low pH. It low. It needs low pH to get the maximum yield. So sometimes we uh, we add some citric acid to, is added to it. We add some citric acid to it. Uh, Guar gum, it has some problems. It is subject to fermentation like the starch. Its typical concentration is from one to two bound per barrel. It's very important to know this information. Uh, number three of the naturally occurring uh, polymers is called the xanthan gum. The, what is the meaning of xanthan gum or what is it used for? Actually, it is the most common viscosifier in the water based mud. Uh, it has the name, its name is xanthan gum, but it's a trade name. It may be XC polymer or barazan or duvis or other names uh, according to the company uh, and to the manufacturer. Actually, it is bacterially produced. It is produced. How it is produced? It is produced by the action of the plant bacterial enzymatic process. So it's a plant of bacterial enzymatic process on carbohydrates in the suitable medium. So it is produced by the uh, by <coughs> sorry <coughs> by the bacterial enzymatic process. Uh, how how the sansangum gives a, gives its viscosifying nature? Why it is it gives a high viscosity? For example, not like the starch. Well, okay, it gives a high viscosity. How this occurs? Actually, the sansangum is composed of five ring. Five one monomer has five ring repeating structure which consists mainly of two rings in the backbone and three rings in the side chain. So the one monomer of the sangam has five repeating, uh, five ring repeating structure. And this, these uh, rings, okay, is mainly cons consists, or the backbone is consists mainly of glucose residues and the branching uh, or the three rings chains are uh, composed from additional sugar residue. These attached to the side chains are various, okay, various functional groups 
like the carbonyl groups, the carboxyl groups, the hydroxyl, and the other. These groups like carbonyl, carboxyl, hydroxyl, and the other uh, can make hydrogen bonding and oxygen bonding and give the, the then, then its unique viscosifying properties. So this is why this is why the then, then gum is uh, gives viscosity while the starch don't give viscosity for them. As you see here, this is the two in the backbone and there are the three in the uh, chain inside the chain and as you see here this is the uh, functional group and this is also functional group and it can be here changed with na or with k for example in order to start the uh, reaction what are the properties of the than than gum number one when a certain concentration of the polymer is reached, for example, we add one bound, for example, the hydrogen bonding develops among the polymer branches as, and the result is a complex tangled network. So this is very important. When a certain concentration of the polymer is reached, okay, there will be hydrogen bonding. Then, Okay, they become complex and tangled network and they become viscous, okay? But can we bump it in its viscous state and how, how for example, you have a bit and this bit has nozzles. So if it is not like water, if you, if you bump water, for example, through the nozzles, it can be deformable and it can be bumped. But if you take, for example, some of the, of the mud, some of the of the, of the uh, some of the cement, for example, and try to bump it through, or some of the slurry, and you can start to bump it through the bed. It will not be bumped. Why? Because it is not flexible. It is not shear thinning. But all the th all the polymers and all, especially the thin thin gum, is shear thinning. What is the meaning by shear thinning? Shear thinning property means that the then sangam at high shear, like like the nozzles of the drill bit, for example, it's a high shear environment. It makes the thinning and becomes like water. It becomes very thin, so it can be bumped easily. And after coming from the high shear environment to the low shear environment, like for example the annulus. It regains again its viscosifying properties and it, it, it becomes more viscous and this helps us to uh, clean the well. Okay, so when the shear is applied to the system during drilling, for example, attractive forces holding the polymers together are pulled apart or are separated and as the hydrogen bonding breaks, the viscosity of the fluid thins, okay, and when the shear is removed, <clears throat> for example, when the shear is removed, like in the annulus, the polymer chains res resume their internal intermolecular hydrogen bonding again, and their original viscosified state returns. So it's called or it's considered shear thinning polymer. This is very important because the thin thin gum is shear thinning polymer. Okay. The, also, the thin thin gum, it's a viscosifier in water and in salt solution, but it depends on its concentration. Uh, it increases the concentrations required in saturated salt solution, as I told you. Uh, it is highly shear thinning. It is highly shear thinning. Its typical concentrations are from 0.25 or from quarter to until two bound per barrel until two bound per barrel okay the then gum particular application in, it has a particular application in potassium based uh, fluid it gives high gel strength high yield point without high solids uh, it provides also suspension for the weighting material in the high mud weight and take care, take care in high mud weight, in high mud weight, 
we only use a small concentration it's about quarter to two half pound per barrel in high mud weight of the van gum uh, thank you very much today we have talked about the natural polymers inshallah we will talk tomorrow about the modified polymers so keep tuned for this until we we meet again tomorrow thank you very much and see you later inshallah